All right, guys, you asked for it, and finally, the wait is over. It's time to vlog with our friends, Fire Rescue. I think I see my friend over here, Alex. Let's go meet him. We're here in Little Haiti at Station 9, and we're meeting up with some of the fire guys. Matter of fact, I got one right here. Alex, what's up? What's up, guys? Welcome to the vlog. Long awaited for, they've been waiting for you. I think we just got a call. Already? Already. Like that? I know it. All right, guys, our first call of the day. All right, Alex, what do we got? All right, we got a patient that just called. A citizen just called that they're having shortness of breath. Um, that really can be anything. So what we do is we'll show up to the house. We're going to do an assessment. We're going to check them out, see what's wrong, and help them out. All right, sounds good. sounds good. We'll put these on. Got it. So what happens now? So now when we pull up, uh, this person's house, what we're gonna do is get the boxes out of the side. We have a med box, trauma box, and an airway box. So since it's a shortness of breath, we're gonna get the airway box. Uh, we're gonna get the, some oxygen, bring it with us, some of the medications that we use when it's a shortness of breath, um, and then we're gonna check them out. All right, guys, the patient's loaded up, and we're gonna head over to, where are we going? We're going to North Shore Hospital. North Shore Hospital, yeah, so all right. Seat belt. Seat belt, let's do it. Rescue 29 in Miami. Time to please show Rescue 29 transport. North Shore, North Shore. Okay, so now this is this is a tricky part too. Some people think just because we have lights and sirens that uh, people know to get out of the way. Sometimes people freeze up and they do the wrong thing, and you gotta be really paying attention and looking at every single angle, what's every car doing, constantly looking at your mirrors, because accidents happen. Sometimes you gotta do this. It's either get over here, block everybody off, or come against traffic, leave all these people alone. Due to HIPAA laws, we can't go inside, actually into the hospital. So what we're gonna do is we're going to wait outside with the truck, and uh, when they come back, they'll debrief us and let us know what's going on. Here's inside the truck. So I'll stand by and stand fast. All good? He's good. We're on the way back, we're sitting in the back. And on the way in, I saw a couple ambulances. So is this considered an ambulance, and if it's not, what's the difference between an ambulance and what we're in right now? Okay, so you're, this is a, a rescue truck. This is Rescue 29. A rescue for the fire department responds to all emergencies. So in other words, if, if you call 911, what's gonna show up at your house is not an ambulance per se, it's a fire rescue truck. They'll have firefighter paramedics from the City of Miami Fire Department there to help you out. 
And the difference between us and an ambulance is that an ambulances are owned by private companies. They don't respond to 911 emergencies. If there's like a like an accident on the street, they can you know pull over and help out. But when you call 911, what's coming to you is us. You're not gonna get a, an ambulance. Right. On the way back to the station, another call. So what happens? You said you're gonna change out some equipment. Obviously, you guys have more equipment on standby. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have extra. We still pack a lot of extra stuff here just in case whatever happens. We have to make sure we have what we need. But it's a it's a good habit that when you're going once we get back to the station, whatever we use, we'll go back and we'll top it off, make sure it's good to go. So, uh, on the way to the hospital, you were driving, you were driving the, uh, the truck, and now we're back here. So, do you guys take turns? Or how does that work? Well, usually throughout the day, there's one person that's assigned to truck uh, to drive the truck, and then you got somebody that's in the back that's supposed to be with the patient. Well, we have to adapt to what the emergency is. So, the driver who's also a paramedic like me was on this side and he was able to find a vein on this side. So rather than sit there and wait till he's done and then we leave, I just pick up what's the next thing to do. All right, man, and I'll drive. So I'll jump in the truck and then we'll take off. Taking a trip? No. Okay. He's okay, we checked him out, and he doesn't want to go, and if they don't want to go, we can't force him. He's okay, his vitals were okay. He knows where he's at, everything's fine. We asked him, what do you, what would you want us to do for you? And he said, no, I just, I just wanted you guys to check me out, check my blood pressure, and that's a part of it too. It's not always gonna be, you know, a gunshot, a heart attack. Sometimes it's as simple as, yeah, just check my blood pressure. And they call 911. So guys, as you can see, this station is one of the busiest stations. We're in the north end. Alex, Alex, let me talk to you for a second. You're running around too much. All right, so tell me, how many trucks are actually stationed here and how many, looks like you got a fire rescue vehicle, how many actual vehicles are stationed here? In this, in this station, we have uh, four vehicles. We have two rescues, an engine, and a quint. So each unit, as a unit number that's assigned. So the call that came in, the reason why nobody else went, it was because of an assignment for the Quint. So the Quint went. What's a Quint? <laughs> a Quint is a fire truck, it's a special fire truck that has a big ladder on the top of it with a nozzle, it can shoot water. And um, it's basically, what we drive around, we say that a Quint is lights and fans. It's full of all kinds of tools. Imagine a toolbox, a special toolbox. That's what pretty much um, all these trucks are. It's, they're full of equipment. There's so much things that we have to carry in order to properly respond to every emergency. Alright. I'm thinking it. I know they're thinking it. Where's the fire pole? <laughs> we want to see the fire pole. At this station, at Station 9, we don't have a fire pole. But we What? At other stations, we do have a fire pole. Station 1's got one, Station 7. This, this whole station's one floor, so no Nick, we don't have a fire pole. Okay. All right, we're gonna have to slide down some kind of pole. You're in, looks like this is your uniform. Mm-hmm. 
And then, well, what about your suit? Where's your big suit? Where's your oh, backdrop uh, suit? You, you my, my, my actual firefighter yeah. turnout gear. Okay. We keep that on the truck. Okay, so it's on the truck. Yes, sir. But it's I on see the truck. some back there. Well, here, the reason why this is hanging up is because we had a fire uh, up last shift or a few shifts ago. So once it's all wet and it's dirty because, you know, fires, you, you get dirty. We have to clean it with a special uh, machine that we have here and we have a special dryer. So this here is, uh, it's our special, it's called the Ram Air uh, gear dryer. So tell me a little bit about the equipment, the, um, the gear that you wear, that you wear. So all, every firefighter has their own firefighter turnout gear. Okay. And it's assigned to you once you, uh, you get hired and you get out of the academy, you have your own gear, it's got your name on it. And in the mornings when you show up, this station, this is our house. We live here for 24 hours. So when you, in the morning, we line up, and in the morning is when the captain will tell you what truck you're assigned to. Like today, I'm on the rescue. But for, this is engine nine. Uh, this is uh, Barbie Hoppy. She's one of our firefighters. She has it set up. So when she shows up, all she has to do is throw her boots on, she can throw her jacket on, you get dressed quick as possible, and then we're out the door flying. What's what's so special about these jackets? Uh, what's the deal? Let me know. Okay, so this these uh, this is firefighter turnout gear. It's a, it's made out of special material. It's not fireproof, but it's strong enough that it buys us some time when we're inside of a fire, we're fighting fire, or we're looking for victims. It's got like a special uh, stuff on the inside that helps keep the heat out. But like I said, it's not fireproof. Just because you have this thing on doesn't mean that you can't get burned. This stuff fails. Um, we constantly have to check it. That's why we have to clean it so much to make it, uh, preserve it as much as we can. So in the mornings you get your assignments. That's kind of like, I guess, the equivalent to our roll call. Right. Yeah, more or less. And you're here for 24 hours? 24 hours. Wow. All right, Alex. I know what this is. Say no more. That's the flux capacitor. First, you turn the time circuits on. Seen it in Back to the Future. Let's move on. This is not. This isn't a flux capacitor. What do you mean? It's not the flux capacitor. This, this isn't a DeLorean. This oh. is a uh, engine nine right okay, here. Okay. Okay. This here is the driver engineer's panel. So the guy who drives this fire truck, the fire truck. Yeah. That's a special position. It's called the driver engineer. So when we get to a fire, we don't just pull this hose and water automatically gets into it. When the driver is driving, he'll pull up. He has to jump out of the driver's seat and come over here, and this is where he goes to work. And it, again, it's not as simple as just pulling one of these levers and yeah. up they get water. There's a lot of math involved. There's a lot of calculations that you got to make. If we are having a fire in an apartment building and it's you know at the fifth floor, it's again, it's not just pulling this. It's got to sit back and cal do calculations and find out how much pressure he needs to send through the line so the water can get to the end of the nozzle. All right. So there's a lot of stuff involved. So I'm guessing you don't need to go past 88 to get the water out of here? <laughs> no, no, not past 88 miles an hour. Oh, okay, okay. But we're fast enough. So how, how hard do these things shoot? Like, let's say if I'm standing up, mm -hmm. okay, and you hit me with it, will it knock me down? Yeah, it'll hurt. Oh, definitely. This is not, this doesn't come out of like at the same pressure that like your garden hose will come out of. This is, this comes out at a lot of force. So some of these, you can charge it up so much that it can go through a wall if you have to. Like, you have to be really careful with it. Wow. Yeah. Through a wall? Mm-hmm. I was gonna put on the canine suit and let, let them hit me with it, but through a wall? I don't no, think so. No, I wouldn't do that. All right. Ooh. Say hi, you're on the vlog. Hello. What's going on? How you doing? All right. So these guys are- Killed it. <laughs> <laughs> Killed it with the interview. <laughs> These guys are our brand new, uh, two brand new firefighters. They just come, came out of the academy. We have a fire academy. And when you're done, you graduate from a recruit to a boot. That's what we call the new guys at the station. These two, these are two boots. All right, All right so there's a call. So let's go. Are we going? No, the twins gonna go. Oh. The twins going. Not We're not going? Not right. this one. All right, this we're gonna, one, next the next one. one. The next one's ours. All right, Alex, so this is the Bay Area? Yes, sir. Can we take a tour of the rest of the station? Sure, let's go. All right, so where are we headed? All right, so I'm gonna take you guys. This is the Bay, so this is where we park all the trucks. Right. And then right over here, we got a door that takes us into the rest of the station. Okay, so this here, this is our kitchen. Um, every morning, 
Uh, we all line up, we get our assignments, and then right after that, everybody chips in $20, and we all take turns cooking. And uh, normally the one that cooks here is Pat, because he cooks really well. We'll go to the store, buy our groceries for the day, come back. It looks like today it's gonna be turkey burgers. So we'll see that. Turkey burgers. And tots. All right, Alex, let's put you to the test. Because you said fire likes history. Yeah. Right? Educate me. Give me something. What do you got? Well, what do you want to know? When was the first fire department created for the city of Miami? Well, our, our fire department was formally created July 17th, 1898. Wow. And what it was, I, yeah, what it was, it was a bunch of guys that got together, five men gathered in a bar in Miami, and they were upset because the insurance was so high. So the only remedy that they can come up with is to have a fire department. Back then, the majority of all the structures were all made of wood, which is why it was so high compared to the rest of the nation. But they got together, formed the fire department, and we've had many firsts. Like this picture right here, this is from 1904. This was our first fire truck. It was horse drawn. And our department itself is rich in history. A lot of things that people don't know about. We were the first fire department to successfully resuscitate a clinically dead patient. That means someone called 911, someone went into cardiac arrest. We were the first fire department to shock a patient and bring him back on the street. I saw some snacks back here. What, what, what is that about? Here, what are these about? I want some of that. This right here is our kitty. Oh. So we assigned one guy to go out and buy like little snacks. So if you want something, for example, uh, candy bars, we've got Oreos. Oreos cost, it says here, 50 cents. So you get your 50 cents, you put it, you pay here, put the money in here, put your money. Close it up and that's it. So this is uh this is the bootleg vending machine. Yes it is. Yes it is. Thank you very much. Absolutely right. Let's just sum it up and let's yes. call let's call it spade a spade. Yeah right. Bootleg vending. I like, like it. it though. I like it. I like the options you guys got here. Mm -hmm. Alright. So so there's a little more history you have. Yes, definitely. What? Give us some more because we love history. We love to, to learn on the vlog. Well this this thing here is full of oh well, we, we gotta go huh? and the tour will continue It wasn't even abdominal pain. Okay. The little girl fell and she hit her leg and they called her to check out, but she's okay. Okay, she's fine. Back at the station. Back at the station. All right, so can we continue the tour? Because yeah. I know they want to see, I think we only got to see the, uh, I think they only got to see that we got the kitchen, the history, uh, the bay, we got a little bit of the bay. Um, you guys said you work, how, many, how long is your shift? 24 hours. So 24 hours, you guys don't get tired? Throughout the shift, or? see Miami firefighters never get tired. Oh, okay, so all right. <laughs> I, had <to laughs> I had to do it. It's all right. too easy. So what? So tell me what happens when you get tired. Well, we do have um, our resting quarters. Okay. I mean, there's like I'll show you. you Want to see it? Yeah, let's go take a look. Come on. We we'll talk about it. Let's be about it. So this is the resting quarters. These are the resting quarters. So everybody here has um, their own room. So you can see, you know, it's the essentials. You've got bed, mattress, and each one of these are lockers for each shift, A, B, and C. Like today's the A shift, that's Q's locker. So in here, Q has all his stuff. He puts on his bedding. In here, this box is the special box because you can program it to go off when your truck gets a call. So what I mean by that is like, 
today we're rescue 29, right? So I'll turn it on. You set how loud you want the alarm to be. That's what it will sound like. That, that has LED lights that at night, when the car comes in, it lights up. So that's another way that it wakes you up. And that's it. And then when a car comes in, it'll wake us up and won't wake up everybody else. So resting quarters. Resting quarters. So, and you have alarms to let you know uh, when you get a call. Mm -hmm. We saw when we first got here, somebody came to the door, knocked on the door, and needed some assistance. Mm -hmm. um, what happens then? Oh, you mean like if we're all the way over here, yeah. how will we know someone's ringing the, the bell over there? Yeah. Well, there's actually a special room over there. Mm -hmm. It's called the watchman's room, and it's the watch cage. Okay. And there's one person, we take turns every shift. One guy has to sleep over there. So if anybody uh, rings the doorbell, anybody calls on the phone, he would get up instead of everybody having to get up. But sometimes people knock on the door because they're having an emergency, they don't have a cell phone. He can jump on and let everybody know over the speaker, hey, we got an emergency and whoever it is will go over there and respond. And this is 24 hours, we're home away from home. So I mean, once we're done doing all the other stuff, doing our checkouts and all that, then you have your downtime, you can come in here. Like I know Hamler is, is learning Spanish. Hamler, say something in Spanish for everybody. Ah, uh, oh man, um, aprendiendo español. Very good. Oh, very good. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Most important meal of the day. What are you making there? Cafecito. Cafecito. <laughs> Baptiste, can you call for cafecito? You know how to do that? This page, well, he's brand new. So I'm gonna help him out. Uh, page, just say cafecito, cafecito. Cafecito for cafecito. Very good. See, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Nick, got yours? Yo. Salute, my friend. Salute, North End. Oh yeah. yeah, that coffee's fire, huh? You like that, huh? huh? Cap, Cap, what's going on? How are you doing? Introduce yourself on the vlog. My name is Captain David Nunez, City of Miami Fire Captain, Station Nine. This is your right. microphone. Thank you, Captain of the Station. See, we're getting ready uh, to do something. Actually, I have two new uh, probationary firefighters. I haven't actually been able to formally introduce myself to. Uh, okay. They came in while I was off duty the last two days. So we're actually gonna go through a series of drills right now and get them ready to go. All right, and this is a normal routine? Normal routine. If uh, they can't dress out in time, they owe me stuff. So oh, pretty much it keeps them on their toes. All right, sounds good. For this, what it's simulating is being at the station, getting a call, and having to go from plain clothes into fully dressed, on air, ready to attack, ready to be able to fight fire. Can't have any skin exposed, their air packs have to be fully open, ready to charge in. Gotta have their gloves on, mask sealed, everything, because that's what's gonna cause uh, the difference between light and death for them inside of a burning building. They made it. All right. Outstanding. So what's up with the what's up with the Niners on the side of the the car? What's that mean? You know what? This is station number nine. Ah, makes oh, sense. Dude, makes North sense. Niner. I thought I was looking for the Nuevos. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yeah? <laughs> New wavies. That's nine. So this 
crushed into the side of a vehicle, we could go ahead and remove all the doors if we needed to, or just one door. Uh, whatever the call dictates is how much we go. This would be, I've got major entrapment, or I've got some issues here where I'm having uh, difficulty taking people out, or I've got multiple people. I'm gonna try and make as much area as I can open so that we can get to uh, full access to the patient. When we're talking about vehicle accidents, some people may see, why aren't they just ripping them out? Well, yeah. our intent is we remove the wreckage from the patient, not the patient from the wreckage. I got you. We're looking at internal injuries, back injuries. We're trying to stabilize them as we go. So the car comes out more so than the patient coming out. Gotcha. So uh, the last little bit we're gonna do is if our dash was crushed down, pinning somebody's legs, we're gonna go ahead and lift. So you'll see how that gets done as well. put this stuff away so we can go at least we're already dressed all right guys so as you heard house fire just like that training's over and we're gonna go do the real thing You have a camera though. Oh yeah, yeah. Bam. All right, guys. So uh, firefighter Cabeda, he has a camera on his helmet, so we're definitely gonna grab that footage when he's done. Alright guys, so what's going on? It's an automotive uh, building here. It looks like there's an office up top and something caught fire up top. Uh, if you saw, the guys were practicing and uh, training and at the drop of a dime, they were in action. So, like uh, firefighters have either said, they're already in their gear, so they were halfway there. Introduce yourself on the block. My fire La Costa from station number nine. Station number nine, but they borrowed you today. At station six. Okay. Day one sub? Day one sub? Day one. You get my nod. When do you guys have break? You guys just work like that? Nick, I'm a city of Miami fireman. I don't even know how to spell break. Oh. What happened there? We had a uh, room that was involved. Uh, there's people that are on the roof doing uh, work and apparently uh, something happened and it caught the room's AC on fire which then spread downstairs right something like that we'll find out more when the investigator shows up right that's really the one that after every, everything's said and done they're the ones that, that look everything up so there was two ladders that were thrown up by engine 9 Kyle he threw them up and then units were able to go up there and do a search. Uh, 2 9, which is what the unit that we're on, uh, we were set up to do the secondary search on the second floor 
everybody was out, uh, but it was a, you know a little bit of smoke, and we had to look through. It's not like in the movies. In the movies, you can see everything and yeah. all that. You can't see anything when it's a fire. It's like your eyes are closed. Yeah. You have to rely on your sense of hearing, touch, no smell because you got a mask on. So, but there's. We're leaving and there's it's still a kind of an active scene. What's going on? Well, somebody else called 911 and they're calling and they need help, so we gotta go. So what's uh what's the plan now, LT? All right, so now we pretty much had an action-packed day. We just had a fire, right? I think you were able to see us uh, go and respond to the fire. We had a second story, uh, smoke and flame showing on the second story of a warehouse that was attached to a residential area right on the second floor. Right. After that, we put the fire out. We did our little secondary search, made sure that the victims or no life was in there. Immediately while on scene, we had another rescue run. And that rescue run we just had was a gentleman with a previous history of pancreatitis, abdominal pain. So we took him to the ER. Our job never stops. All right, and now we're back at the station. What's the next move? Next move, we're gonna, since we're at the fire, uh, we gotta make sure that going into fires, we always have to mask up and suit up like he did. Since we went inside to do a secondary search, we depleted our air tanks because in that type of atmosphere, we need to be on air, we can't breathe that type of stuff. Right. So now, myself and all my other guys, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna exchange out our air bottles so we can have a uh, full supply ready to go next time and our clean air to um, breathe for the next fire we may have. <laughs> all right. So now I actually have to take a shower, take off all this stuff, put on fresh gear, and still respond. Hopefully we don't get a call while I'm in the shower. All right, Alex, unfortunately, that's where this camera's gonna end for your, for your shower time. But I appreciate everything. You wanna go? You wanna no, go? no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So thanks for the hospitality. You're welcome. And we're allowed back, right? Definitely. Okay. As long as you wanna work, you can come back. All right, so we're definitely coming back at Fire Vlog 2, and there's only one thing left to do. So guys, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next vlog. I'm out, he's out, adios.